Hello, it's Stuart, the Unrepented Atheist. So we've got Atheist Experience, a clip with Don Baker and Tracy Harris, classic call. Uh, Richard is phoning in to say that uh, his God is not the tr traditional um, Christian God or God of Judaism. He's kind of sort of made it up himself and it helps him out a lot. So let's hear what he's got to say about his God. I, I, I don't no. see the traditional concepts of God here. And I do understand what Don is asking. He's saying, why wouldn't you simply label this the things I don't understand? Right. And you could call it that. You could call it anything. And people call it all sorts of things. You can call it your higher self. You can call well, it he calls it our ignorance, universe. right? Don is saying you, it's, it's simply another, you know, different labels of, of human sure. ignorance. But I believe that this is what, this is the thing that when people are referring to God, this is an aspect of what they're speaking about. Certainly, is I think I think you're correct. There is something called the God of the gaps, right? And that is almost exactly what you're describing, if not exactly what you're describing. Basically, a label that you use when you're talking about a God who is there to account for all the things you don't know. So yes, people use this, this definition for God in many instances. And I would say on a personal level that even though I definitely do not follow the God of any holy book, um, I actually talk to something that I label God, and I find that when I do that, when I ask for help from it, I actually get help. Now, whether that's my higher self, a higher part of my can I ask? Self. Can I ask? Sorry, before I let before Tracy goes on <clears throat> and just comments on that, I just want to say that when people call in and they say they've got their own god they don't follow god of the bible they don't follow god of uh, islam or whatever or any organized religion that for me has got no more nor less credibility than any other kind of god because of the fact that there's not only no evidence for the god of the bible and the god of islam there's also no evidence for any kind of god that you might want to make up and call it your own so it, it lends no credibility at all when people, I get the impression that when people call and say, oh, I don't believe in the God of the Bible or, you know, God of Islam, you know, that God of the Bible was a brute, you know, and, but no, I've got my own God. And no, no more credibility. And there's no reason, to, there's no reason um, uh, to rule out uh, the God of the Bible, who's a brute, if you're going to try and rule in your God, who's a nice guy, because... <clears throat> With there being no evidence for one or the other, there's there's no reason as such why the God that's up there couldn't be an evil God. Why not? Ask a question here. Like when you talk about ask for help and get help, are we talking about tangible or intangible? Like, for example, is this help that you get like, I feel really tired, like I just can't go on anymore. And then. Yeah. So sorry. So he's just said that um, he admits that his God is a bit of a God of the gaps, but that's not enough. He's also said that he prays to it and he gets help from it. I get this, this hint of inspiration, or is it more of along the lines of I'm $500 short on my rent and then I found $500 in an envelope on the street? Right. Um, I guess it's more like if I'm if seeing a lot of dark clouds in my life, can't see a way out, and, and I feel trapped, and then I ask for help, it seems like a half an hour later, hour later, whatever, I will get, like light will break through and I'll have new understanding and a more hopeful outlook. Okay, do you so feel Do you feel like this is potentially like a meditative sort of technique that you model a part of yourself as God that you then sort of project these ideas, like I want to find a way out of this and so then sort of in the background maybe your mind works on this and then it sort of finally sure. gives you the feedback and says here's the way out? Absolutely, yeah, sure. But I'm trying to find why people, as you are, believe so strongly in God, and I feel that this is a big part of okay. that because there are real benefits that people get from it. It's not just a bunch of BS. Well, okay, I, I okay, I, I get what you're saying, right? And um, Young had a lot to say about the idea of people modeling God in the you know in their own image in this way, and I think you're correct that a lot of people do this. I think the problem comes in when they are not aware that they're doing this, right? And they actually right. credit some supernatural, you know, I, I, I 
just it's sort of like the ridiculous man in the sky thing and they will basically right. say i can't do this myself god helped me and i'm so glad because i'm so weak and i'm so incapable and so this is what kind of i think is the concern for me i agree with you that people do it i and i wish that they were more self-aware as you seem to be like you're like i'm using these labels and i'm i understand what i mean by this and and i agree with the the reasonable um, points that you're, that you're making when you talk about the criticisms of it. But at the same time, there are so many people who don't understand uh, w that they are doing this for themselves. And so when you say they benefit, I agree that they benefit in the ways you're describing, but I think that in the way that they're looking at it, there's a huge, yeah. huge uh, negative side to it where they un oh. undervalue themselves. Sorry, it's purely, it's good. well, in my view, the most likely explanation is placebo. Um, to think that there's a God sitting up there who is going to help you through your dark clouds. And one of these dark clouds might be that you're struggling to get through your degree. For example, you're struggling to motivate yourself. You're having trouble getting your academic work in on time. I mean, just as an example, or maybe you're struggling to pay your mortgage. Uh, you're struggling a bit for money or struggling to pay debt off, this type of thing. Or maybe your relationship is going through a really bad patch. Who knows? It's, um, how can I say, it's a bit kind of egotistical and selfish maybe, unrealistic to expect that you said a prayer and a real God is up there helping you out on these relatively trivial matters when there are children around the world who are dying of mal malnutrition. There are children who are being abused and raped and there are all sorts of unspeakable war crimes and horrors going on all the time. And you think that you're praying to God for these relative trifles, if you don't mind me saying. I mean, they are trifles compared with the suffering that a lot of people go through. So, uh, no, I don't buy it. I think that it's most likely a placebo. As Tracy's implied, you model this sort of uh, figure that is going to help you out. And it's no different really from Dumbo's lucky feather that helped him to fly. That's why I've been interviewing people and trying to fight the good fight as you are, because it creates spiritual elitism and distrust between people that doesn't have to be there. And yeah. so I guess I, I hear what you're saying, Don. Why do you use the word? It's Don, correct? Yes. Yes. Oh, Why do I me. use the word God? It's just a word. It's just a word for I don't understand, yeah. but I get benefit. Yeah, did you hear that? He said it's just a word for I don't understand. Remember that. It, it's got a lot of baggage. So, um, yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> make sure you really want that package. <laughs> well, and, and I think the thing, too, though, is that a lot of times, and this is certainly not. This is more something to think about. This is definitely me not telling anybody what they can and can't use as far as language or labels. But you do have to kind of bear in mind that that, that, that label comes with lots of baggage, that when people mm -hmm. hear it, it's not just about, it, it's about the baggage that you present to other people. So when people who are, for example, looking at this as more of a literal thing, whereas you're understanding it as more of a metaphor for these aspects of yourself, it mm -hmm. could bolster somebody's view and they could be of the opinion that yeah yeah here's another person that believes like i do even though really what you're promoting is not what they're promoting at all i'm trying to create a bridge i guess with somebody who would say well you don't believe in the god i do where if i use the word god and i mean it in my own way then i'm saying uh. we're looking to something that it's a similar thing, a similar part of ourselves of the universe. You, you might, understand. it might give you an opening, but I, I think that unless you are really scrupulous mm -hmm. or careful about how you're, you know, really defining terms and you're careful to do that with each person, you might end up confusing things more than helping. Well, hold on a minute. The, the God that he's defined for himself, uh, as he said, it's a God of the gaps. It's another, it's another word for everything that he doesn't understand. Secondly, he prays to it. That's not vastly different from the God of classical theism, is it? Um, I think that it's probably only one, one or two steps um, fewer than uh, the Christian God, because all you're really missing there, and he hasn't really talked about life after death, but I suspect he might have something to say about that, is that with the Christian God, 
you have the potential for eternal life after death. Obviously, you're missing the salvation part of it um, with Jesus Christ and everything and, and the resurrection. But the fact that you can pray to this God of his and that it fills all the gaps in his understanding is not really vastly different. So in terms of bridging a gap between him and, say, Christians, there's not really much of a gap to bridge. He's only really one step away from being a Christian. That's my view. Let's hear what else Don has got to say about this. But I mean, it's definitely yeah. something that it's like an experiment you can go for. Um, like I always tell people when they're doing something like that, if I have concerns about it, I can express my concerns. But ultimately, the the judge is going to be whether or not it succeeds. Right. So if you go in and you do this and you find that you you have success with it and you get people to understand that they are really um, mm -hmm more responsible for their own uh, support in life for themselves. Yeah. And this well, he's not going to be able to do that because he believes that it's not him that's responsible for the support. He actually said that it seems to him that when he prays to this God uh, in times of dark clouds, help comes along literally half an hour later. So he's crediting this God with that. And Tracy's suggesting to him I don't think maybe she's taken on board exactly what he said, but as far as I'm concerned, um, there's no there's the, 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 he's there's no way that he is going to convince Christians that they're responsible for their own support and that they don't need a god because he's in that boat. He's in exactly the same camp. This begins to work and people begin to listen and they begin to shift more toward what you're talking about. I would say I wouldn't argue with success. Um, if you want to try that's this right. and see how it goes, that's fine. Uh, I, I do have, like with Don, I have concerns that you're going to run into some confusion and some backlash um, from that and that it could <laughs> bolster people's negative concepts more mm -hmm. than help them. But I also mm -hmm. would say that if, if it's something you want to try and if it ends up working, then you know, let us know. All right. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Well... I don't know uh, about the conclusion of that call. The caller doesn't seem terribly, terribly happy. I'm not really sure he probably understands why he called in the first place, but it just comes back to praying to a God and God of the gaps. It's not vastly different from the Christian God, I think. And unfortunately, they didn't ask him about life after death and one or two other things, which I think the odds are he probably would have been saying that, oh, yes, and, you know, uh, there probably is life after death and this God has got something to do with it. So I've come across this before with people have said, oh, we're not religious. You know, no, um, no. Oh, no, we don't believe in the God of the Bible. No, no, but we pray. And, you know, we've got our own, uh, we've got our own church. And um, you can't explain how something can come from nothing. But we've got our God who can fill in all those gaps for us. So we know how oh, it's, not vastly different. Okay. I'm sure that there'll be plenty of you out there who will disagree with me and say, no, Stuart, you didn't bloody listen to the call, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, if you've got that opinion, let me know. Maybe I missed something. Uh, I didn't listen. I didn't play the whole call. No, sorry. I did play the whole call through earlier. I can't do the whole call uh, with these long, like 15, 20 minute calls because with my chat, they'll end up at half an hour and I've got to get my videos inside 12, 13 minutes. I just have to. That's, that's how it goes. Thanks for watching. Be back again soon. Bye for now.